Arthur Schopenhauer is considered to be one of the greatest philosophers of all time. He lived from the end of the 18th to the beginning of the 19th century, and while he is often described as a genius philosopher, he's also been given less flattering monikers such as the Sad Prince of Pessimism and the Messenger of Misery due to his particularly unique philosophical views. He influenced the work of many great thinkers after him, from philosophers to psychologists to physicists, including Sigmund Freud, Friedrich Nietzsche, Ludwig Wittgenstein, Albert Einstein, and so many others. Arthur Schopenhauer's work is part of the philosophy of pessimism, and Schopenhauer is mostly known for his famous book, The World as Will and Representation, in which he describes the physical world as the manifestation of an invisible force, a metaphysical will. Schopenhauer's philosophy is based on the idea that the world we perceive is not the real world. We see reality through our own personal filters, which Indian philosophy calls the veils of Maya that prevent us from seeing actual reality. Schopenhauer is one of the philosophers who pondered the most on subjects such as loneliness, solitude, boredom, and what true happiness means. Although his views on life are known for being extremely pessimistic, his work reveals a deep wisdom which can teach us how to deal with the most unpleasant episodes in our lives, which is why in this video we bring you seven life lessons inspired by the philosophy of Arthur Schopenhauer. Number 1. Find Yourself in Solitude Arthur Schopenhauer says, We can only be entirely ourselves as long as we are alone. Therefore, whoever does not love solitude also does not love freedom, for only when we are alone are we free. According to Schopenhauer, the capacity to be alone is one of the most distinctive marks of a high intellectual being. Sociability has an inverse relationship with the intellectual capacity of someone. The more sociable we are, the less we can invest in developing our intellectual capacity. The less sociable we are, the more time we have to reflect on the meaning of our existence, on who we really are. That is why Schopenhauer encourages us to learn to be in solitude, to find that quiet place in our minds where we can retreat and find ourselves. Our freedom exists only in our solitude, when all the outside noise is shut down. However, there is a danger associated with being lonely, and a distinction must be made between solitude and loneliness. If loneliness means to be desperately in need to be with other people and not to be able to be, solitude means that you made a conscious choice to be by yourself and enjoy your own company. Schopenhauer doesn't encourage us to withdraw from this world completely. He just emphasizes that you need to learn to be by yourself, at least from time to time, in order to connect with your greatest aspirations and inner nature. To apply this lesson in our own lives, we need to put aside more time to spend alone, reading books, meditating, taking long walks outside and contemplating the world and our existence. Nowadays, with so many distracting forces like social media and deadlines at work, we can easily forget about our long-term goals. Thus, we become prisoner of circumstance. We lose control of our own lives. The best thing to do to avoid this is to prioritize the time we allocate to ourselves. We need to write me time into our agenda dedicated time in which we can retreat from the outside world. We could schedule a meditation walk to a nearby park, or block a few hours to spend time writing in a journal and to think on your goals in life. Or perhaps spending time reading a philosophy book which could give us new insights into the world around us. Number 2. Remove suffering to be happy Schopenhauer tells us, what is generally called happiness is actually and essentially only ever negative and absolutely never positive. Oftentimes, Schopenhauer is described as a philosopher who didn't believe in the concept of happiness. 
This is far from the truth. Schopenhauer didn't link happiness with feelings of joy, pleasure, and ecstasy, which he saw merely as ways to escape from boredom and negativity, but rather he saw in happiness the absence of suffering in the first place. For example, we are not aware of how healthy we are. It's only when we start to feel some sort of pain, such as a headache or stomach upset, that we notice our bodies not operating as normal. In the same way, only when we experience a certain degree of emotional suffering, we realize that we were happy before, but not anymore. Given this simple fact, in order to be happy, what we need to do is to remember the happy times we had in life, to evaluate where we are now, what kind of suffering we're experiencing at that moment, and make the effort to remove that suffering. To do that, we need to track our happy moments and try to relive them as much as possible. Also, when we experience something unpleasant, we should try to find methods to remove these unpleasant experiences from our lives. It can be a painful process to make all those changes, but it's incredibly worthwhile. If we just focus on getting pleasure from life, it means we ignore the problems instead of facing them until eventually they catch up with us once they've become significant enough issues to be unavoidable. But if we face our problems directly, instead of ignoring them, we will be able to remove the roots of suffering and we can increase the amount of happiness we experience in our lives. For example, consider that you're working in a miserable job that you hate, but you can't leave it because you need to pay the rent and cover your bills. One evening, after a long day at work, you stop in front of your favorite shop and you see a stunning outfit in the window that you desperately want to add to your collection and you're sure will make you feel better. Instead of buying that outfit with your credit card to please yourself for a brief moment, you should try to reflect on the cause of your unhappiness. In our example, you realize that you make too many sacrifices for a job that gives you so little satisfaction. So instead of the short-lived dopamine hit of an impulse shopping spree, you could spend that money on further education to open access to better jobs that will make you happier in the long run, or to start a side business like an eBay shop or a YouTube channel to shift focus away from your day job and begin to build a platform to help you escape it permanently. Number three, understand your subconscious mind. To quote Schopenhauer, Man can do what he wills, but he cannot will what he wills. Will is the basis on which Schopenhauer's philosophy as a whole was built. In his main book, entitled The World as Will and Representation, we understand from the concept of will that it is a psychological force that controls our actions. We often find ourselves doing things automatically, like an invisible force controlling us. This is what Schopenhauer calls the will, a blind, irrational force which takes over our minds in many life situations. We often think we are in control of our actions, but actually there's something bigger than ourselves which drives us. We're like the rider on a big elephant, our subconscious. We, the conscious mind, can only guide this elephant, but we cannot fully control it. The best thing to do is to become friends with him, try to understand him better, what drives him, what scares him and guides him on safe land. We need to keep in mind we cannot force him to do anything, but we can help him achieve his goals faster. As a real life example, consider that you want to lose weight. You can try to force yourself to keep a rigid diet, sweat for two hours every day in the gym, but there's a great danger you'll make your elephant angry and he'll protest in the most brutal way, deciding all of a sudden to eat an entire chocolate cake at the end of a difficult day at work. Your elephant will get his revenge if you don't treat him with kindness. To avoid making your elephant angry, you should try to introduce a new tiny habit each day. For example, today you can start eating only one slice of bread at each meal, Tomorrow, you can go for a walk for 10 minutes. The day after tomorrow, you can walk for 20 minutes and so on. Make the changes carefully and systematically if you want to see the long-term results. 
Number four, limit your expectations. Schopenhauer teaches us, the safest way of not being very miserable is to not expect to be very happy. Schopenhauer argues that a life with less suffering is much better than a life with the greatest joys. When we're young, we pursue our goals with energy and anxiety, with the far-stretched ideals of happiness, chasing professional ambitions to be somebody in society, fighting to be somebody we are not. In other words, we put a lot of stress on ourselves and our expectations are very high. Nowadays especially, the lifestyles of the rich and famous are presented as a model to follow, but behind the scenes they often fight with severe issues of drug abuse, depression and anxiety. We should stop chasing these kinds of ideals. Instead of fighting to acquire or experience things to make us happy, we should focus on minimizing the pain. As we get older, a lot of us realize this pattern and start giving up the frantic pursuit of happiness that kept us miserable in our younger years. We start to focus on minimizing pain rather than pursuing pleasures in life. That invisible will which pushes us towards an endless torture and letting the desires run our lives has less effect when we're older. But certainly, it's much better if we try to practice limiting our expectations from a younger age to live more of those happier years without so much suffering. To do this, we need to work on how we see the world and how we see ourselves. The way we see ourselves and the world is oftentimes the root of our unhappiness. We need to be more realistic about our qualities and skills. We need to put our professional goals on a more realistic scale. Also, we need to be more compassionate towards other people, have fewer expectations from our partner, and stop demanding other people be perfect. It is far better to work on our real qualities and skills and develop them step by step than pretend we are something we're not in order to achieve a higher position in our job. Also, it is far better to enjoy the company of an imperfect partner than to change your partner often in the pursuit of finding a perfect one. To be happy, peaceful and healthy is much more important than to be famous, adored or having a partner as a trophy to show off. Therefore, we need to limit our expectations and learn to enjoy life as it is. Number 5. Be compassionate. Schopenhauer posits that compassion is the basis of morality. Schopenhauer believed that there are many ways to free a person from suffering, at the same time saving him from the crisis of existence. One is the path of art, the path of austerity and non-desire, and another is the path of morals. If art is a temporary remedy, the path of morals is a permanent remedy. Consequently, one must realize that happiness is not the goal of life. This is because life has no goal, and perhaps sleep is the only moment when a person achieves a natural state of happiness. Our environment would be unbearable if we didn't have any moral guidance to navigate through it. We need to find meaning in this world, and one of the most effective ways to find this meaning is to learn to be compassionate towards other human beings. We should not pursue our happiness at the cost of other people. In the end, we are all manifestations of the will. We are all in this life together, and according to Schopenhauer, all moral actions can be reduced to injure no one. On the contrary, help everyone as much as you can. In our daily lives, to show compassion and good morals, we need to think of the people around us every time we speak and act. We have to make sure we don't injure anyone, that our actions are fair and considerate to others. Also, we have to do our best to help the people who need help. For sure, we can think of family members and friends who are now in trouble. Maybe they don't have a job, maybe they're struggling with a physical disease or condition. Perhaps they're having problems in their relationship. It isn't that difficult to put in a good word with the company you're currently working for, for a friend applying for a job there. 
It isn't difficult to call them to ask them how they're doing, how they're coping with their medical issues or with marital problems and offer advice and comfort. No matter how small, it might just make all the difference. Number 6. Avoid Boredom According to Schopenhauer, the most general survey shows us that the two foes of human happiness are pain and boredom. Boredom is the second enemy of living a happy life, and it is one of the centerpieces of Schopenhauer's philosophy. As soon as we get rid of pain, we are susceptible to enter a state of boredom, which prevents us from having a fulfilled life. Arthur Schopenhauer is a pessimistic philosopher. He didn't see happiness as a common state for a human being, but rather as an extraordinary and temporary moment. His work focused not on happiness, but on pain and boredom. As soon as you remove pain from your life, you will usually have boredom taking its place, and not pleasure. We are perpetually in pursuit of trying to capture what we desire, need, or lack. Once we succeed in obtaining our goal, we realize it doesn't give us the satisfaction or happiness we'd anticipated. And off we go again, pursuing something else to make us happy, only to find ourselves back to the very boredom we were trying to avoid. Boredom is the state when you have everything you need, and oftentimes leads to nihilism and depression, because the force which pushed us to chase the desired material things, the will, can never be satisfied with what it gets. This is why we often see famous people who have absolutely everything in this life, but they don't really know how to maintain their happiness. They soon fall into boredom, which leads us to nihilism and depression. They succumb to drugs, they divorce more often, they spend their money in a careless way, or even commit suicide. In order to avoid this from happening, Schopenhauer recommends us to concentrate less on the outside world and more on the inside. Less on possessions, less on how many cars you have, how many houses, and basing your worth on your wealth. Only by ignoring the shiny objects of the external world can you really escape from oscillating around the pain-boredom axis. To do that, you need to concentrate more on the connection between your body and mind. To have a more holistic approach to life, to be aware of each moment. Meditation can help a lot in this. It helps in becoming more conscious of the small things that are essential in life, starting simply with your breath. Also, writing a gratitude journal each morning, counting all the blessings you have in life, can help you avoid taking these things for granted. A gratitude journal is a great shortcut for maintaining a fulfilled life, free from boredom, with the only caveat being that you need to count your inner blessings more. You need to focus on your inner world, on your close relationships, and not on the external world, on possessions, success, or fame. Number 7. Make room for art. In our final quote from Schopenhauer for this video, he tells us, the true work of art leads us from that which exists only once and never again, i.e. the individual, to that which exists perpetually and time and time again in innumerable manifestations, the pure form or idea. Schopenhauer was very much influenced by Plato, the ancient Greek philosopher. Plato considered that we are like cavemen. We can see only the shadows of real truths their manifestations in this world, and not their real essence. Schopenhauer, by analogy, considered that we live in a world where the truth is distorted. What we see is not the essence of reality. We can only see the shadows. The will to live is what keeps us prisoners in the cave, manipulating our lives like we're some kind of puppet, keeping us in the cycle of pain and boredom. There is one great way to temporarily escape from this cave, from our ordinary life, and this is through art. For example, we can contemplate the beauty of a painting, listen to high-quality music, 
sculpting, photographing beautiful landscapes and people, doing anything which elevates our souls and is creative by nature. Schopenhauer considered that music is the best way to see the true essence of the world. Scientists from Stanford did a lot of studies on the Baroque music of the 18th century, and it was proven that by listening to Baroque music, the brain changes. Baroque music of the 18th century increases the level of awareness and intelligence. Even if you might not be a fan of 18th century Baroque music, you can still follow Schopenhauer's advice to include as much real art as possible in your life, because through art, you can liberate yourself from the ordinary desires and needs which keep you in pain or boredom. Art has the quality to transcend reality and to connect us with the real spiritual essence of this world. If you enjoyed this video, please do make sure to check out the full Philosophies for Life channel. And for more videos to help you find success and happiness using ancient philosophical wisdom, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.